Shields up, Iron Breakers. We're kind of here coming at you with another video. Welcome back to Monster Hunter World. Today, I figured I would update all of you guys on my Arch Tempered Elder Dragon builds because I understand that there's probably a lot of people that are still trying to get through all of the Arch Tempered Elder Dragons. Throughout each of the builds, I'll also be giving you guys a couple of tips specific to each of the Arch Tempered Elder Dragons. And this is probably going to be a long one. So, without any further ado, let's get started. The very first build that I got to tell you guys about is naturally the Face Buster. You guys know I love the Face Buster. There's a whole video video dedicated to talking about the face buster but the reason why this build comes first is because the next arch tempered elder dragon that we should be getting is going to be Ner Gigante and as such this is most likely the build that I'm going to be taking to face off against Ner Gigante so real quick we got the Kyar Buster Bomber with a Vitality Jewel now you guys know the deal with this if you have any other gun lance with wide shelling level 4 you can use that instead if not use something with wide shelling level 3 you will still be fine like uh, the one from Basil Goose should be okay. Uh, and then just do the rest of the build as best as you can. Now we got Empress Crown Alpha Destroyer Jewel Level 2 Artillery 1. Empress Male Gamma Earplug Jewels Level 3. Zora Claws Gamma Destroyer Jewel Level 2 Artillery Level 1. Empress Coil Alpha Destroyer Level 2 Artillery 1. Empress Greaves Beta Shield and Jumping Jewels. Now, I understand that not everybody has three artillery jewels. Trust me, you have no idea how much I sympathize if you don't. But if you don't have those, then instead of finishing things off with the Iron Side Charm, you'll want to use an artillery charm, which is much easier to do than getting three artillery jewels. And then you can replace the artillery jewels if you have them with Iron Wall Jewels. But if you don't, just get something else that will be useful for you. It doesn't really matter what, the most important thing is that you got to get that artillery in there, otherwise your damage is not going to work at all. Now, the finalized version of this build, you're going to be looking at level 5 ear plugs, level 3 tool specialist, level 3 health boost, level 3 park breaker, level 3 artillery, level 3 evade extender, level 3 guard, 1 blast attack, guard up, critical status, and... Lunastra's favor, full set bonus. We got stamina cap up and mind's eye ballistics, which means that your repositioning pokes are never going to bounce and you can block more than your average build because you got additional stamina. You can also use this to face off against other arch tempered elder dragons. What you would have to do is you would have to replace uh, your destroyer jewels with something else that might be more useful for that encounter. So, for instance, if you're fighting against Lunastra, you might want to get some fire resistance in here. If you're fighting against Against Teostra, you will definitely want to get some stun resistance in here to prevent all those nasty stuns. If you're fighting against Kushala the War, it's going to be tough because there's not a whole lot that's going to make you wind immune in this specific build. I have a specific build for Kushala the Aura, but you can put in those wind resist jewels and hopefully that will work out for you somewhat. I would still advise you to go with the different build that I'm going to be telling you uh, in just a couple of seconds here. And if you're going against Zinojiva, um, I wouldn't go against Zinojiva with this because that fight is just so annoying. Arch Tempered Zinojiva is really annoying. We'll, we'll have a whole build just dedicated to that. And you guys will understand just how annoying that stuff can get. Uh, and other than that, if you go against Valazak, replace Destroyer Jewels with Miasma Jewels, naturally, as to be expected. But otherwise, you can pretty much use this build overall for a lot of stuff. The reason I put this first is because this is probably going to be the build that I'm going to be taking against Arch Tempered Nergigante. And there you go. Now, moving onwards. This next build is the one that I use for both Theostra as well as Lunastra, okay? Because they kind of share that whole fire theme, so you'll definitely want to get a lot of fire resistance. And at the same time, whenever there's explosions on screen, there's a great chance of you getting stunned. So the two key skills that I'm trying to get with this particular armor beyond all of the utility skills are going to be fire resistance and stun resistance. And if you can't get both of them onto the set, what I would advise you is when you're fighting against Lunastra, get fire resistance. When you're fighting against Teostra, get stun resistance. That's what I I would go with. Anyways, then we go on. We got Devastation's Thorns with Satiated Level One. You can put anything else in here if you want to. Satiated, I just have it because you tend to go through a lot of consumables when you're fighting against Teostra and Lunastra. So this just makes it a little bit better every now and then. You get additional consumables, but it's not really a big deal. So you can put whatever the hell you want here. Now you guys might be wondering why Devastation's Thorns? Why not something else? The reason is Devastation's Thorns has Elder Seal High and 
It also has impact files, which means there's a chance for you to stun, knock them down, as well as there's a little bit of flinch that comes out whenever you do get that Elder Seal proc. So it not only stuns them from time to time, but also gives you a decent amount of flinch whenever you get those procs, which gives you more openings for unleashing more super amped elemental discharges. Now I know you guys are gonna say work on, I, I already see gun lance, charge blades, and you're probably still gonna see a sword and shield. That's because those are my three main weapons, okay? There's also an insect glaive build in here. Uh, and some light bow guns, but either way what I'm saying is that I use charge blade for a lot of stuff because it's really really good So if you guys don't know how to use charge blade I'm sorry try to use another weapon and still try to get some of these skills because like the earplugs in my opinion is just Essential so anyways basil helm beta earplug jewel level 3 vitality jewel level 1 cools to roths ire magazine jewel level 2 steadfast level 1 kushala grip gamma uh, we're gonna have three fire resist jewels in there and if you don't have Kushala grip gamma just get something else that's got three slots uh, Three tier one slots because basically that's what that's doing there The reason I go for Kushala is because it also gives you focus if you can't get that uh, try getting what was the name of the other one? Uh, it was the black Diablos gloves and then hopefully you have a charger jewel to stick in there because otherwise You know y y we're fighting end tier bosses. You're expected to have end tier game Anyways continuing on we've got basil coil beta empress greaves beta uh, on basil coil beta We got tenderize level uh, level 2 and empress greaves beta We got tenderize level 2 charge level 2 artillery charm level 3 wrapping up the build which gives us level 5 ear plugs, level 3 stun resist, level 3 health boost, level 3 fire resist, level 3 focus, level 3 artillery, level 2 weakness exploit, which you can replace for something else if you really want to. Uh, it's not that big of a deal, the weakness exploit, to be honest. Uh, level 1 critical boost, level 1 capacity boost, free meal. But basically, like I said, uh, your key skills here are fire resistance as well as stun resistance super important when you're fighting these two and then naturally the biggest tip that i can give you about uh, both of these is that for lunastra you got to pay attention when she's got full aura when she's bright as hell sparkling all over the place and you want to flash her the reason you want to flash her when she sparkles all over the place because that's going to trigger the nova but you will control when the nova gets triggered so you'll flash her and then you'll run away she'll nova and then you'll go back in the key the dealing with Lunastra, I've said it a bunch of times just in case you guys missed it, is controlling the Nova. You control the Nova, you win the battle, it's no big deal. Kind of the same thing with Teostra, the key to winning the battle is controlling the Nova. If you guys are struggling, you can replace one of these Tenderizer Jewels with uh, a Shield Jewel if you really want to, and that will basically enable you to block that Nova if that is a big problem for you. But basically, uh, Teostra's Nova is, if you can predict when he's about to do it, then get ready to flash it. If you can't predict the second you see him cast it, you got a Superman dive. Don't even try to do anything else. Just instantly Superman dive because if you're just like a millisecond too slow, he'll get you with that Nova. It is a lot faster than the regular version. So, you know, that's the thing. But again, key skill against that Teostra is that stun resist because he comes at you so fast and so repeatedly relentlessly smashing your character until he gets a stun and that's just the way that Teostra goes. Either way, this is the set that I take whenever I'm hunting Arch-Tempered Lunastra or Teostra. Moving right along, we're gonna take it to the Kirin and ugh, Jesus Christ, even in this footage I died using this set because to me Arch-Tempered Kirin is just completely ridiculous. It requires a lot of practice even with a proper set it just requires so much practice that it's insane so for um for arch tempered care we're going to be using the carabuster bomber again going to be putting a vitality jewel in there then we got the guild cross circlet beta we're going to stick it full of iron wall jewels hopefully you have those if you don't replace them with something else that might help but like you really got to get three block and, and artillery uh on this set it's just pfft. Otherwise, you're going to be bounced back like nobody's business. Anyway, then we got Kulf to Roth's Ire Beta, because again, we want to get that stun immunity. Thunder Resist Jewel and Steadfast Jewel, which is going to make us stun immune. Karen Long Arms Gamma, and I understand some people are going to say, Rurikon, you're using Karen Long Arms Gamma. That means you would have already defeated uh, the Gamma Karen. That's because this is going to be the first item that you want to craft from uh, Arch Tempered Karen if you are doing that grind. Until then, uh, craft the Karen Long Arms Beta 
and use the same jewels. Basically, the reason I'm using this is because of how much resistance it has to thunder and how much armor it has, which the Karen um, Long Arms beta is going to be pretty much comparable to this one. Uh, moving right along, we've got Karen Hoop beta. Uh, we're going to put some vitality jewels in there as well as an anti para jewel. Then we got Zenojiva Spores Gamma with Shield Jewel, Anti Para Jewel, and another Anti Para Jewel. If you don't have the Zeno Spurs Gamma, then you can put uh, the, the legs from the Gala suit in here because they have the same uh, decoration slots. It's just they're not going to have as good defensive stats, but you can achieve the same build using uh, those legs as well. Then we got Artillery Charm 3 to wrap things up, and uh, the complete build has. Paralysis re resistance level 3, stun resistance level 3, which basically means you cannot get stunned, you cannot get paralyzed, so you don't even need to worry about blight or anything else, you just can't get stunned or paralyzed. Thunder resistance usually takes care of that, but I, I'm just like, I'm full blast when it comes to Arch Tempered Karen, because it's just such an annoyance. Health boost level 3, and even then you will still get one shot if you're not careful enough. Artillery level 3, guard level 3, blood resistance level 2, like I said, now mandatory critical boost level 2, just a side effect of some other stuff that we're getting. Divine Blessing level 2, that is pretty cool though, every now and then you do uh, get the benefits of that Divine Blessing, so that's a good thing to have. Free element ammo up, again doesn't do much. Guard up, critical status. And uh, no set bonuses. So this is what I take against Arch Tempered Karen. Uh, the only advice that I have for you is rotate your mantles. Naturally, you're going to be running with uh, Thunderproof Mantle as well as, uh, what's the name of the other one? Temporal Mantle. And you're going to be rotating those as often as you can. Basically, if you have a mantle up, equip it instantly. Because if you don't have a mantle up, you're just asking to die against Arch Tempered Karen. He really does deal that much damage. Uh, or maybe I just struggle a little bit more with him than most people, but like Arch Tempered Karen, I don't like him. I don't like him, so I just like go completely overboard whenever I go to fight him, and that's the only way that I deal with that. So when it comes to Kushala, the aura, I actually took a bit of a different approach. I used uh, the sword and shield here because I like the agility that provided me and also because I just happened to really enjoy using sword and shield and I felt like it really shined in this fight. Uh, but then again, you know, to each his own. So anyways, we got the Empress Edge Sticks, which is probably one of my favorite weapons in the game right now. It's so damn good with the blast procs and the razor sharp spare shot, the white sharpness, all that good stuff. Uh, and then on there we put a flight jewel level 2 because I do jump a lot. I try to mount him a lot. That is just something that I find uh, is a good way to try and keep him grounded because Kushala likes to fly a lot whenever he goes up in the air. You don't have a lot of ways to deal with it because arch-tempered version of him isn't really affected by uh, flash bombs. But anyway, uh, we got uh, Vitality Jewel in there as well. Then we got Basil Helm Beta Earplug Jewel Level 3. Basil Helm Beta with uh, Vitality Jewel Level 1 as well. Kushala Sister Beta, another Vitality Jewel. Kushala Grip Beta Tenderizer Jewel. Basil Coil Beta Tenderizer Jewel Level 2. And Kushala Cruise Beta Tenderizer Jewel Level 2. And we wrap everything up with the Demolition Charm. And I know you guys are probably looking, what's up with all the Kushala bits? Well, that's because that's pretty much the key thing to fighting Arch-Tempered Kushala the Aura. Because he's got that annoying wind uh, aura around him at all times. So you're going to want to get that Kushala set bonus. Anyway, looking at the skills, we got Earplugs level 5, Health Boost level 3, Blast Attack level 3, Weakness Exploit level 3, Handicraft level 2, which is not necessary, just like a bonus, Evade Wind level 2, which is still good to keep things going around, uh, Evade Extender level 2 as well, Airborne, Very Sharp Center Shot level 1, and the Kushala Dora Flight Nullify Wind Pressure. This doesn't nullify all wind damage, but it gets rid of that annoying aura that he has on him that does not let melee characters attack him, which is pretty much why I use this. If he's up in the air, there's not really a whole lot you can do. You have to wait until he comes on down. You can try to get your Palico to shoot and hurl stuff at him if you really want to use melee like I do, but uh, yeah, also rotate your mantles. I use Rocksteady and Temporal on this fight, but uh, I don't find AT Kushala particularly hard. A lot of people apparently have a lot of problems with it. I just find that it takes a lot of patience. And usually you want to try to keep um, a Temporal Mantle for the final phase because he's going to fill up the whole arena with whirlwinds that are going to deal like way too much damage. 
So uh, try to do that and also remember that in the final stage, if you're using this fight, that pillar in the middle, you can like do the jumping attacks off of it with sword and shield, which is uh, pretty damn good. If you use it right, it's pretty damn good. Moving right along, let's take it to Arch-Tempered Valhazak. We got, again, Devastation Storms for the same reason that I use those on Arch-Tempered Lunastra and Teostra because they got impact files, which help you stun, and at the same time, Elder Seal High, which also helps you get rid of the auras and gives you a little bit of a flinch, which sometimes might be an opening for you to beat the crap out of them. Then we got Basil Helm Beta with earplugs because, again, we're going to go for earplugs. We have one Medicine Jewel. You can put anything else in here if you want to. That's completely up to you. I just like having a little bit more regen. If I could, I would actually put three Medicine Jewels in there. I believe the very first build that I did for this actually did have three medicine jewels because it's just that miasma eats through you like nobody's business okay they got the mascus male beta uh three miasma jewels in there that's no brainer miasma jewel being the key skill to having when fighting Val Hazak. I mean you can have whatever set you want you're gonna bring three miasma jewels in, in this in this thing there, there's there's no if ands or buts about it you're gonna bring three miasma jewels to this fight okay no excuses now we got Valazak braces gamma and i understand some people are not going to have this uh because you're still farming arch tempered Valhazak. just get whatever gloves you can get that have two tier two decoration slots there's a bunch of options now uh an example would be lunastra's gloves beta they have two slots the reason why i use these ones in particular is because they bring in the dragon attack and the dragon attack can also be applied to Devastation Storms because it is a dragon weapon, so it increases your damage a little bit, but it is not by any means mandatory. It is just the most efficient way to do it, and if you're grinding for uh, Arch-Tempered Valhazak, I would advise you to get these gloves first because then you would have the first piece of the set. Anyway, we're going to put a Charger Jewel in there together with a Tenderizer Jewel. Then we got Basil Coil Beta, again, earplugs, Magazine Jewel in there so that we can uh, have that capacity boost. And finally, Empress Greaves Beta, because it's got that uh, additional vitality, as well as two Tenderizer Jewels, and we wrap things up nicely with an Artillery Charm. Finalized build, Earplugs level 5, Health Boost level 3, Dragon Attack level 3, Weakness Exploit level 3, Focus level 3, Artillery level 3, Effluvia Resistance level 3, Recovery Up level 1, Wish It Could Be level 3, and capacity boost everything that you would need for your charge blade with the exception of attack naturally and, and by now you guys are noticing a theme so Rurikon, what you're saying is most of your builds against arch tempered elder dragons are going to include the earplugs the health boost and whatever damage stats you can eke out on top of the defenses and the key skills and yes you're right because arch tempereds they roar a lot and sure you can block those roars all day if you want to or you can be dealing damage while they're roaring, which to me is the most efficient way of dealing with it. But hey, like I said, if you don't if you don't want earplugs, don't use it. Use your own builds. That's again, builds is a thing that is a, it's a personal thing. It varies from player to player. This is just what I find more efficient for me. Also, for Valhazak, I tend to use Health Boost and Temporal Mantle. I use Health Boost because it is one of the best ways to stay alive. Just remember with Valhazak to always save your specialist tools to whenever he changes area. Because otherwise, you plop down a Health Boost, he switches area. Very, very frustrating. So use your tools pretty much at the start of each area so that you get maximum benefit when it comes to Valhazak. Anyways, moving right along, we got Arch-Tempered Xenogiva. I don't like that fight. That fight takes way longer than it should. That dude's got way too much health, and he can basically murk you at the drop of a dime. So, in order to in order to deal with Arch Tempered Zenojiva, the build that I did basically consists of using an insect glaive, stay in the air as long as you possibly can, and at the same time, do not to waste your time by if you die, you're gonna have fortitude so that you come back and you beat the crap out of him. That's just the way that I look at Xenojiva because it is such a huge time investment that wasting time, like I don't feel like, oh, I died once, I'm gonna restart the quest. No, when I go against Arch-Tempered Xenojiva, it's like I go in there and I'm going in there to kill him regardless of how many times I die because he, he does feel a little bit cheap at times. So anyways, the way that I do it is True Gay Bolg because it's got that dragon damage but mostly because it's got uh, some sweet affinity and uh, it just looks good with the rest of the set. Like, you can use whatever 
uh, blade you want, really, because I believe he's got a two-star weakness to everything, if I remember correctly. But you do not want an Elementless, because we're going to be using the Drachen set with the additional uh, air damage and all of that stuff. So you definitely want an Elemental Insect Glaive. Pick whatever one you want. Doesn't make that much of a difference. I use Truge Bowl. You can use anything else, okay? Uh, we put an attack jewel in there because it's going to get us to level 4 attack. Then we got uh, Drachen. It's basically full Drachen set. And the decorations are going to be Dragon, Fortitude, Dragon, Tenderizer, Tenderizer, Dragon, Tenderizer. Uh, the reason why we have so many Dragon decorations, including putting them in places where it's tier 3, is because most of the damage we're going to be dealing on him is going to be Elemental. Because we're going for an Elemental Crit build. I mean, it's not actually Elemental Crit, so to speak. It's like uh, ele air elemental crit, oh, whatever. It's, it's the skill from the Drachen set, okay? And then, anyway, we wrap things up with the fitness charm so that you can stay in the air longer. That's the idea with that. So we got level 6 critical eye, level 4 attack boost, level 3 dragon attack, level 3 critical boost, level 3 weakness exploit, level 3 constitution, power prolonger, level 1 airborne, and fortify airborne because you definitely want to get that additional damage while you're in the air and fortify because like I said I don't like wasting time and this fight takes way too long so therefore I just use fortify if I die I die I come back stronger kind of like Goku then we got soul of the dragoon both of them elemental airborne increasing your elemental damage when you crit in the air and master's touch so that it reduces your sharpness usage this is the most efficient way that I have of dispatching uh, Zenojiva other than taking a heavy bowgun or something like that. You guys know that I'm not a huge fan of bowguns and I would rather use this. If you'd rather use a bowgun or a bow or whatever, have at it. It's pretty easy to do it that way as well. This is the way that I choose to do it though. And finally, Arch-Tempered Kolf Taroth, which is probably the monster that I hate hunting the most because I've hunted so damn much and I hate the reward systems. And you guys know that I don't like Kolf Taroth, okay? You guys know I don't like Kolf Taroth, Tempered, Arch-Tempered, regular version. Don't like Kolf Taroth. But anyways, the build that I use is what I like to call the lazy build. So basically, you get the Empress Shell Sticks uh, because it's got lightning ammunition and rapid fire on there and it comes with the razor sharp spare shot skill included. Put a release jewel in there, bolt jewel level one. They got Rathalos Helm beta, bolt jewel level one. Rath Soul male beta, mighty jewel. Dahan Van Braces, mighty jewel, mighty jewel. Kulf Taroth's malice beta, attack jewel level one. Kulf Taroth's malice uh, beta, also bolt jewel level one. Kaiser Greaves Gamma Destroyer jewel level two and Expert Jewel level one, and then a Breaker Charm. So this is gonna give you Critical Eye level five, Attack Boost level four, Thunder Attack level three, Free Element Ammo up level three, Part Breaker level three, Maximum Might level three, Handicraft level one, which you don't need, Razor Sharp Spare Shot level one, as well as Rathalos Mastery Critical Element, so that you actually get the, um, you get the additional elemental damage whenever you do crit. So this is for phase one, naturally, because during phase one, uh, Kolf Taroth is particularly weak to lightning. So on phase two, we got the Kyar Blitz Ice, uh, and I know that not everybody's gonna have Kolf Taroth weapons and all that stuff. Just get whatever weapon you have that has ice rapid fire. Check the ammunition types in the crafting thing, in the workshop, and just get something that's got rapid fire ice i don't remember what the name of it is but that's the weapon that you want to be getting to use with this build uh if you get the kyar blitz ice it basically means that it already has the uh, the built-in rathalos bonus if you don't have that one don't worry about the rathalos bonus focus on everything else because elemental damage is not as important in the final phase anyways like it still deals a good amount of damage but ultimately the biggest thing there is going to be sleeping the monster and you know you can still deal damage but mostly sleeping is what matters uh Nergante helm beta with um expert jewel one and attack jewel one karen jacket gamma with two expert jewels xenojiva claws gamma with critical jewel and mighty jewel and expert jewel xenojiva spine gamma with release jewel level three expert jewel level one xenojiva's Genojiva Spurs Gamma, True Shot Level 1, Expert Level 1, Expert Level 1, and Attack Charm Level 3, granting us Critical Eye Level 7, Attack Boost Level 4, Free Element Ammo Up Level 3, Critical Boost Level 3, Maximum Might Level 3, Special Ammo Boost Level 2, Power Prolonger Critical Element Level 1, and Razor Sharp Spare 
shot. Like I said, you might not have critical element if you don't have the Kiara Blitz Ice. That is fine. This is the weapon that I use. Also remember that in the second phase, you can swap to a different weapon that maybe you're more proficient with because there's not that much of a chase. You're actually engaging the monster in combat. If you want to use a melee weapon, I would recommend the Insect Glaive, particularly useful for your group because you will be able to mount and um, you know bring the monster down that way. But whatever weapon you prefer to use is fine. Just remember that on this phase, uh, pretty early on, you want to sleep her. And this weapon does have sleep ammunition, so sleep Cult to Roth, bomb Cult to Roth, and remember to also place your minds down when you do bomb her. The way that I usually do it with my groups is um, I tell everybody we bomb the head whenever we get to that stage. Uh, we usually do two stage Cult to Roth, so uh, first stage, beat the crap out of her, get her all the way to where she loses her mantle, and then we let her leave. And as she is leaving, because there's a timer where she leaves after a while, we go back to the first areas and we collect footprints and stuff like that. And then on the second phase, um, on the second try, we go in, we beat the crap out of her, and when, when we finally get down there, I tell people, we're going to bomb the head, because some people like to bomb the tail to break, get the tail break guaranteed. And usually what happens is I just tell them, look, you guys bomb the head, and after we bomb the head, I focus on the tail with uh, the freeze ammo and slicing ammo and shit like that, and everybody else focuses the head, and usually that works out. We usually get all of the breaks, so this is the gun that I usually use to break the tail and help people break in the head. But yeah, that's uh, Cult to Roth. And that pretty much covers everything with the exception of Behemoth, but Behemoth is very much its own thing. He's not really an arch-tempered, he's more of a extreme. Uh, which I guess it can pretty much be the arch tempered since he's the toughest thing that is in this game But I have like full videos already dedicated to behemoth and there isn't really any relevant changes to that And it's not like I can just tell you guys about oh, here's a behemoth build Because behemoth comes with very strict tactics and shit and you need to check out the actual behemoth videos uh, to talk about that but either way uh, hopefully this video helps you guys out. If you guys enjoyed it, remember, hit the like button. Helps out a lot. If you guys are new here, hit subscribe button because I'm going to be covering this, Anthem, and a bunch of more games in the channel. Hit that notification bell. Comments and feedback in the comment section below. And also, a lot of these builds, uh, I tried to have parts that were attainable uh, at the time. I realized there is a gamma piece here and there but most of the stuff is attainable by the time you get to fight that specific arch tempered at least i like to think so either way that's gonna be it for this video i'll see you guys on the next one peace